The next class, Reptilia, these are the true terrestrial vertebrates. Though we discussed that in class Amphibia, though they stepped onto the land for the first time, they are not called to be the true terrestrial vertebrates. But reptiles are the first true terrestrial vertebrates who started laying eggs on the land. The reason why I will tell you at last. Why the name Reptilia? In Latin, repere or reptum means it crawl or it creep. These are the animals which creep or crawl on the ground. These are the creeping animals crawl on their belly. Hence the name reptiles, reptilia. And mostly terrestrial, as I said that the lead a terrestrial mode of life, true terrestrial vertebrates. And moving on to their body, the body is dry and it is covered by cornified skin, epidermal scales or scutes. Overall, it's a dry skin as they can lead a life totally of terrestrial more. Mostly terrestrial money, it means to say that some are aquatic. I'm specifying the one in which the dried and cornified skin with the scales and skews you can come across here. And coming to the tympanum, tympanum is present which represents the ear, but they don't have an external openings. External ear openings are absent. The tympanum represents the ear. This ear, we can say as ear I'm talking about, in fishes you come across only internal ear. And in amphibians, the middle ear is evolved for the first time in amphibians and so on in the reptiles also. Coming to that, as these are also tetrapodal animals, they too have the two pairs of limbs as same as in the members of amphibia. Coming to the heart, the three chambered heart as same as in the members of amphibia with two atria, the right and the left atria and the ventricle. But in crocodiles is a four chambered heart. Crocodiles share some of the properties with mammals. In mammals also they have four chambered heart. So do the crocodiles also having this four chambered heart with which they share some of the properties of the mammals. This is about the heart. Moving on to their body temperature control, their poikilotherms. Fishes are poikilotherms, amphibians are poikilotherms and even reptiles also poikilotherms. They are cold blooded animals. They cannot maintain their body temperature constant, I said several times. And another interesting feature in the members of snakes and lizards, they'll shut off their external skin, I mean their exoskeleton, they'll shut off their skin, the cast will be seen in order to promote the growth. What's that behind this casting phenomenon? Why they shut off their skin? in order to promote the growth, as it's a tighter, in order to promote the growth, they'll shut off, in meanwhile, they'll form a new one, they'll grow in this size, it promotes the growth. Moving on to the reproductive part, the dioecious, as usual, sexes are separate. And coming to the fertilization, they have internal fertilization. Here, I would like to add one point. From now onwards, the three classes, the reptiles, apes and mammals, in them, you should take an into granted that fertilization is internal fertilization and the development is direct. Why? These are amniotes. As I said that these are the first animals to lay the eggs on the land. I mean, to say, animals in the sense, I'm talking about the vertebrates. Though amphibians stepped onto the land for the first time, they didn't breed, they can't breed on the land. The reason, if they lay eggs on the land, it will dry up because they don't have a hard shell covering their eggs. But in the reptiles, they have a hard shell covering their eggs. Though they lay eggs on the land, it can be protected. And the amnion, I'm saying that's an amnion. What is this amnion? Amnion is nothing but a membrane surrounding the embryo. It's an extra embryonic membrane outside the embryo. It protects the uh, embryo from drying up so though it lay eggs on the land they can be survived so it is the first amniote 
reptiles, apes and mammals, all they are amniotes, they have this extra embryonic membrane which protects the embryo from desiccation, drying up. So, in them the fertilization is internal and the development is direct, it is to be taken into granted. And they are voviparous and some are viviparous also, but majority of them are voviparous, egg laying. And moving on to the example, chelone. Chelone is a turtle and testudo is a tortoise. Turtle money which is seen in the marine waters and the tortoise which is seen on the land. You know tortoise but though some people will say that though you will approach when you will see in the sea waters also you will say the tortoise tortoise but it is not a tortoise it is a turtle. But when it is in land one land chelonians are called as a testudo that is tortoise. The chameleon or chameleon is the one which is a tree lizard and calotis is a garden lizard. Crocodilus, crocodile, alligator, alligator. The crocodiles and the alligators look similar but in their snout shape and size it differs. And hemidactylus is a wall lizard. And coming to the poisonous snakes, Nasa, the cobra, Bangaras, the crate, Vipera, vipers, these are all the poisonous snakes these are. So, these are the examples. So, what to be highlighted in this class? These are the first animal to lay the eggs on the land because the amnion will protect them. They are the earliest amniotes and they have a dried skin and terrestrial mode of life they can show and the four chambered heart in the crocodiles which are resembling with the mammals. And the moving on to the next very interesting thing I told you in all the amnions, the fertilization is internal and the development is direct, they do not have a larval stages. Moving on to the next class, aves. Aves are the feathered bipedal vertebrates. Feathers are the unique characters of the class aves. The birds, any bird is body is covered by the feathers. So feathered bipedal. They have only two limbs. Though they are tetrapodans with the four limbs, I mean F O U R four limbs, in them the four limbs are modified into wings. So they have only two limbs, that is hind limbs, meant for a swimming, walking, clasping the trees, and all, is with only these two pedals, two limbs. Four limbs are modified into wings and hind limbs itself meant for all the activities. And you are observing the beak here and the wings modification of the four limbs. On the hind limbs you are observing the scales. Scales are present on the hind limbs. And the body contains the head, neck, the trunk and the tail. These are the divisions of the body. Head, neck, trunk and the tail. Coming to their skin, the skin is a dry skin without any glands, no glands are seen, only the single gland, the one gland is present at the base of the tail called as oil gland and this gland is well developed in aquatic birds. You might have seen that they extract this oil with the help of their beak by picking there and they are going to wipe it to their feathers. So that oil will helpful to push the water effectively in order to swim. Bones, I mean endoskeleton, they have a ossified bony endoskeleton, ossified money well hardened bony endoskeleton in them. And the long bones are referred as a pneumatic bones and these bones are with a hollow fill, I mean, sub, I mean can, with air cavities. Why like this? These are all the adaptations for flight mode. If the long bones are with associated with the air cavities, the filled with air and hollow bones, it makes their body weight lighter. If the body weight is lighter, they can fly easily. Majority of the birds are flying birds. But some of the birds are flightless like ostrich, the kiwi, emu. These are some of the birds which are flightless birds. But majority of the birds are flying. And no flightless bird is represented from India. All the birds of India are flying birds. You will get the doubt why. 
So try to find out why, even you can find out in the courtyards of your house and all, where you can come across the hens which cannot fly and some of the birds which cannot fly. Why they cannot fly? Why? But they, they are flying birds. Why? Try to find out. You will get the answer. So no flightless bird is represented from India. All birds of India are flying birds. Coming to their digestive tract. The digestive tract, like all the animals, they also have the stomach, intestine, esophagus and all. Besides, they have two uh, special organs are present called as crop and gizzard. As you are very new to the first year, you can feel like whenever you go with animal kingdom, starts with animal kingdom, you won't better understand this. But when you step into the arthropoda, in arthropoda members also, there is a crop and gizzard is present like in cockroach. It is one of the previous neat question. Crop and gizzard are present as an additional parts of the digestive tract of apes. Moving on to their heart. Heart is a four chambered heart with two atria and one ventricle. Crocodiles, four chamber, birds, four chamber and even mammals also four chamber. And the very next point, interesting point here is homeotherms warm blooded animals they can maintain their body temperature constant irrespective of environmental temperature there's the reason why you can find the birds in the extreme conditions of the world like if you talk about you know well the birds and mammals are the homeotherms warm blooded animals as they maintain the constant internal temperature they can live even in the extreme conditions of the world like you know northern hemisphere with polar bears the mammals and southern hemisphere with penguins which are the birds and moving on to the respiration respiration is through lungs as a pulmonary respiration and lungs are associated with air sacs this will be helpful to exchange of gases so this is the one reason even the air will be fresh air is always enters into the respiratory tract of the birds making them metabolically active the birds are highly active metabolically and sexes are separate dioecious as usual and i don't need to say the point here let me move on this with oviparous egg laying no bird is viviparous for your kind information if you talk about reptiles i told you majority are oviparous but some are viviparous, but no bird is viviparous. All birds are viviparous without exemption. They are egg-laying. And as I said in the previous class that you want to take into granted that in all the amniotes, reptiles, apes and mammals, the fertilization is internal and the development is direct without larval stages. Moving on to the examples. Carvus. Carvus is a crow. Colombo, Pigeon, Cetacula, Parrot, Struthio camellius, that is ostrich, African ostrich, Pavo, Pavo cristatus is a national bird of India, Peacock, Peacock is a national bird of India, its scientific name is Pavo, Pavo cristatus, and Atenoditis, Atenoditis is a penguin which right now I told that as their homeotherms that made them to even live in the hemisphere like southern. Neophron vulture. So these are the examples. The Carvus crow, Columbo pigeon, Cetacula parrot, Struthio ostrich, Pavo, Peacock, Atenoditis, the penguin, Neophron is a vulture. So highlighting the points of the class A's, these are the feather bipedal vertebrates these are. And in their pneumatic bones that makes them weight lighter and lungs are associated with the air sacs, no glands, skin is dry with only a single gland present at the base of the tail that is oil gland. And some of these are the features and the digestive tract I told you the crop and gizzard. So these are to be highlighted in the class A's. Moving on to the last class, but not the least class, mammalia. Even the human being also belongs to this class, mammalia. Why the name mammalia? Mammals. They have a unique glands by name the mammary glands. 
with the secretion of mummy, the milk, they nourish their young one. Hence the name mammalia. They have mammary glands. As I said in the previous class of Aves, as they are homeotherms, as they are homeotherms, as they can maintain their body temperature constant, they can be seen in the diversified habitats. The mammals are seen in the polar region, as I said, the polar bears. They can be seen in the mountains, grasslands, forests, in the water, in the dark caves. You can see the mammals anywhere in all the diversified habitats. The reason that they are homeotherms. Irrespective of their environment surrounding, they can maintain their temperature constant so that they can survive. And some of the mammals can fly. You know, bats. Bats are the mammals which can fly. And some mammals live in the water. You know, whales, dolphins, they live in the water. And coming to their limbs, as you know that they have four limbs. Helpful for swimming, walking, running, climbing, all these activities. It's quite easier to know about the class characteristic features of this class mammalia. Because as we can compare with our surrounding animals and we. And the skin possesses hair. Hair is a unique character of mammals. You won't come across the hair in any other animals other than mammals. Only the hair is seen in mammalia. You can't see the hair in any other members. Okay, that's a unique character. For the first time, the external ear or pinna is seen in these animals. As you see, I said internal ear is seen in fishes, middle ear in the members of amphibians, reptiles and even aves. And in birds, there is a just opening is present, the external ear opening. But in mammals, you can come across the pinna, the external ear. It's also the characteristic feature. Some of the unique features you want to stress on. Heterodont. Hetero, different, odont teeth. There are different type of teeth are present on the jaws of mammals. Just try to recollect what you learned in your previous years, I mean in your lower sessions. They have incisors, the cutting teeth, canines, the tearing teeth, premolars and molars helpful for grinding. The mammals have different type of teeth. That's why they show different modes of uh, food habits. For example, as you have a different types of teeth, you can have a, uh, this uh, parota, you can have this uh, whatever this other thing, ice cream or juice or whatever it may be. Some you want to need to chew and some you want to bite and all. Okay. Four chambered heart they have. Two atria and two ventricles. Four chambered in crocodiles, birds and mammals. Homeotherms, as I said already. So the unique features of the class mammalia are the presence of mammary glands, the presence of hair and also as I said that they have the external ear or pinna and the different types of the teeth. So these are the special features of the class mammalia. Moving on to the examples before this, let me discuss about their reproductive system. Obviously they are unisexual. Money, dioecious they are, sexes are separate. As I said several times, as you move on in the evolutionary part, you'll be come across the separate sexes. And majority of them are viviparous with some exemptions, which I wrote on the board here, ornithorhynchus, the platypus or oviparous. Only a few mammals are oviparous, majority are viviparous. They give birth to the young ones. And coming to their Development, you know well, is direct and the fertilization is internal as you want to take into granted for all these three classes from reptilia to mammalia. Internal fertilization, development is direct. And coming to this, ornithorhynchus is a oviparous, a glaying mammal. And remaining all are viviparous. Macropus, kangaroo. Tyropus, the flying fox, the bats. Camelus, camel. Macaca, monkey, ratus, rat, canis, that it is uh, dog, felis, the cat, elephas, elephant, 
equals horse. Delphinus is a common dolphin, is a national aquatic animal. The river dolphins are the national aquatic animals, is also one of the previous neat question. Balanoptera, Balanoptera is a blue whale, which is a largest animal, it is not only a largest mammal, but also a largest animal, blue whale, very huge thing is Panthera tigris, the name itself indicating here it is sounding, it is a tiger, Panthera leo lion, so these are the examples, I will go once again, the Macropus, the kangaroo, Tyropus, the flying fox, the bat, Camelus, the camel, Macaca, the monkey, Rattus, the rat, Canis, the cats, Felis, the canis, sorry, dog, Felis is the cats, Eliphas, elephants, Equus, the horse, Delphinus, the common dolphins, and Balanoptera, the blue whale, Panthera, tigris, that it is, tiger, and Panthera, leo, is the lion. As we finished off successfully the Kingdom Animalia chapter, as I said in the beginning, majority of the students feel very difficult chapter it is, as it is a drive with so many examples and the terminology and the comparison, so they feel a difficulty. If we go with the comparative, with the, some of the salient features of the Kingdom Animalia of the different phylas, it's a little bit easy. Even I made it while teaching. Whenever I taught it the different classes of card data and the phylums of this all, we, I keeps on compare with one with other. So it's a very easy guys, no need to worry about it. First, if the thing is there in your brain of feeling like animal kingdom is a difficulty, just remove it, wipe it, then it becomes easy for you. Trust me, you'll go with this uh, thing, the whatever I taught it you and after that if you make uh, some questions like exercises, it will be uh, easy and aram se you can feel a comfortable zone in this phylum and this kingdom animalia overall. Let's move on to this different phyla salient, salient features in a comparative way. Just let's start guys. You know well the porifera. First I want to remind you once the phylas, all the phylas of the kingdom animalia. Around 11 phylas are they starting from the porifera, the primitive animals, the first animals. So let's move on with all these things guys. Porifera, Nidaria, Tinophora, next Platyhelminthes, Askhelminthes, Anilida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, Hemicardata, Cardata. Eleven phylas you need to study in this kingdom, Animalia. Let's discuss some of the salient features in comparison and in this ease way. The levels of organization. Porifera. You know, porifera have cellular level of organization. Those cells are many, but the cells are not organized to form into tissues. You just recollect it, becomes heavy, feel difficult. Just I'll move on with the terminology. Just try to recollect what we said in the descriptive part of this video. Let me move on with again the levels of organization in sequence of all the phylas guys. Porifera, cellular level of organization. Nidaria and Tinophora, tissue levels of organization. And Platyhelminthes, organ level. And from ASCII helminthes to card data, organ system level of organization. By seeing the tabular form, you must be terrified. What is that? There's so many terminology. But it's easy. Just porifera cellular level, nidaria and tinophora tissue level, platyhelminthes argon level. From ask helminthes to card data, all are with argon system level of organization. Moving on to their symmetry. The type of symmetry in porifers is asymmetry, no symmetry, no possibility of identical halves. In Nidarians and in the members of Tinophora is radial symmetry. And in Platyhelminthes to last is a bilateral symmetry. You come across in the descriptive part of this lesson, the two exemptions, I keep on stressing this word several times are repeated. Already I hope it's imprinted in your brain if you follow from the beginning to the till the end of this session. I mean the, 
animal kingdom. From the platyhelminthes to cardata, they all exhibit bilateral symmetry. The exemptions are the adult gastropods showing the asymmetry, adult echinodermata members showing radial symmetry. No doubt their larval forms showing bilateral. So, periphera asymmetry, nidaria and tinophora radial symmetry, even adult echinoderms radial symmetry, and platyhelminthes to cardata, that is bilateral symmetry. So we finished off the levels of organization and the symmetry. Moving on to the coelo. In Porifera, Nidaria, Tinophora, Platyhelminthes, they have no coelom, acelomates. And in Askelminthes, you come across the pseudo coelom because you know well, it's a pseudo coelom it is. False coelom, it's not lined by the mesoderm, not formed by mesoderm, just the mesoderm scattered as a pouches in between ectoderm and endoderm. And from the phylum Anilida, all are coelomates, I mean the true coelomates, Anilida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, Hemicardata and Cardata. All these are six phylums which you come across, all are coelomates. You know the first true coelomates are Anilids. Moving on to the segmentation part. Segmentation is absent and you come across only in the three phyla the segmentation, Anilida, Arthropoda and Cardata. The body is divided into segments, segmental division is seen in these three phyla, Anilida, Arthropoda and in the Cardata. Remaining all the phyla, no segmentation is absent, absent, absent. So if you study in this like in this comparative way, it's very easy guys. Moving on to the next feature, digestive system. In Porifera, no special digestive system, you know, diffusion, water canal system will facilitate this transportation of the food, I mean collection of the food and all. And in Nidarians, also no special digestive system they have, but they have a sac-like gut, you know, with a single opening. It's not that specialized. Even Tinophora the same, even the Platyhelminthes is the same. Nidaria, Tinophora and Platyhelminthes, they have a sac-like gut with a single opening where it serves both mouth and anus during ingestion mouth, during ejection anus. And moving on to the next ASCII Helminthes members. From ASCII Helminthes to Cardita, they have a tube-like gut. They have a two openings, one for ingestion, other for ejection. So ASCII Helminthes to Cardita, the tube-like gut, the complete gut, whereas in Nidaria, Tinophora, Platyhelminthes is an incomplete sac-like gut. In Poriference, water canal system will, that purpose is served with the help of this water canal system. This is about the digestive system. Coming to the respiratory, in Porifera, there are no special respiratory organs. The canal system is itself helpful in the diffusion of these gases, I mean the exchange of gases. Even in the Nidaria, Tinophora and in the members of uh, Platyhelminthes, it's just like a diffusion, the exchange of gases, the gases will be exchanged from higher concentration to the lower concentration means from those, uh, what we can say that from higher concentration to the lower concentration, that is oxygen rushes to inside, carbon dioxide leaves. And in Askelminthes also the same. And in Anilida, you come across the cutaneous respiration with the help of skin and in Neris, like aquatic annelids with the help of parapodia. In arthropoda phyla, you will come across the several type of respiratory organs we said like gills, book gills, book lungs, trachea. As I said, majority of animals respire through if they ask in general, it's a trachea because insects have tracheal system. Moving on to mollusca. They have a feather like gill in their mantle cavity that is tinidia, that is a respiratory organ of them. And in the members of Echinodermata, the water vascular system will helpful for serving that. You know that. And in Hemicardata also gills. And in Cardata, fishes money gills, the cyclostomata gills, the fishes gills. In amphibians, you come across the gills in their larval stage and lungs and skin in their adult stage. 
and after that reptiles apes and mammals they'll respire through lungs pulmonary respiration is a quite bit easier not that difficulty as i'm saying so many words but is not meant that to be that's difficulty and moving on to the after the digestive respiratory i'm moving on to the circulatory system no circulatory system in the primitive animals no in porifera no in uh, no pen nidaria tinofora platyhelminthes askelminthes but you can see that circulatory system is evolved for the first time in the phylum annelida they have closed type of circulatory system but i said in leeches is open type in arthropoda is of again open type of circulatory system mollusca open type echinodermata open type Eurocardata open type, cephalocardata open type, and in the members of the vertebrata, you know, is a closed type of circulatory system. And the next is their distinctive features. Why the phylum Porifera? Because they have a porous nature. The body is having porous nature, and the unique feature is water canal system. Nidaria. the unique is the possessing of nido blasters the nido side self helping in their anchorage prey, capturing the prey and the defensive mechanism chinophora they have eight rows of external ciliated comb plates helping in locomotion that's also very easier because the name itself indicating some special features distinctive features of some of the members after tinofora platyhelminthes you know that flat worms in them you come across even the flame cells which are helpful for their osmoregulation and excretion excretory cells the flat worms and some of the parasites of the flat worms have the suckers and hooks as we discussed tinea solium is helpful to attach to the host body with it and askelminthes members you know they are round worms and they have a highly the well developed muscular pharynx and their pseudo coelomates is more than enough about their distinctive features in askelminthes members annelida you know that in the members of annelida as circulatory system is evolved for the first time and the body is divisible into rings that the segmented worms and circulatory system is evolved for the first time coelom is seen for the first time in these animals arthropoda arthro joint spoda appendages these are the jointed appendaged animals besides they have a chitinous exoskeleton which made these animals to lead a successful life in order to prevent the loss of water from the body molluscans unsegmented animals where the body is covered the smooth body covered by the calcareous shell and they have a mantle the unique feature of radula in their buccal cavity the unique feature of them echinodermata they have a water vascular or ambulacral system helpful in the you know locomotion capturing the food i mean trapping the food taking the food and also the gases exchange and excretion water vascular system is the unique feature of echinodermata moving on to hemicardata half cardates thought to be the cardates earlier i made it clear we justified why hemicardates have the proboscis the collar the trunk and they have a proboscis gland for their excretion you know exclusively marine they are marine worms they are called to be the last but not the least is a cardata so many unique features what i can say fishes completely aquatic and the major representatives of the vertebrata phyla and in amphibians the who stepped onto the land for the first time dual mode of life reptiles the dried skin laying the eggs on land which are truly terrestrial vertebrates and aves feathers are the unique features of them they show flying more though they are flightless also you can see the feathers like in bird like ostrich mammals as i said the unique feature is the presence of the hair mammary glands so guys i hope that you made it i mean i made it easy it's done with animal kingdom but hopefully i think you feel the easiness and is a pretty good to have this session and i hope guys you enjoyed this animal kingdom chapter and with the same josh if you continue uh, after listening 
and after doing this exercises and of so many questions and all uh, very 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 happy to move on as i said in the beginning you will going to face the two questions so eight marks will be in your pocket and is very easy the only problem with this chapter is multi conceptual questions you need to be alert with the comparison and sometimes is a tricky the questions that make you confused but if you are confident enough if you have the concept is like a happy journey that's all guys we'll meet in the next video with another chapter have a good day that's all